Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Build an IAM Data Connector in the Time It Takes to Have a Cup of Coffee. My name is John Collins, Vice President of Business Development here at Tabora, and I'll be moderating today's webcast where you'll learn the secret cure to IAM connector pain. With that, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce our featured speaker, Sanjay Nandampali, Chief Executive Officer and founder of Tabora. Sanjay, the floor is yours. Thanks, John. Welcome, everyone, to yet another webinar in the Tabora webinar series. Previous webinars included a joint session with Forrester Analyst on identity intelligence and how it can help various IAM processes. Recently, we did one around five key metrics that should help organizations with their IAM programs. As part of the webinar, we showcased assessment tool that was uh, given free and it helps give a quick assessment of an organization's IAM environment. In the near future, we will discuss why we should say goodbye to monolithic architectures for IAM solutions. Microservices architecture is going to be critical for IAM deployments of all sizes and we will show the benefits it brings in terms of maintenance, cost and DevOps activities. The webinar following that is going to be a story around comprehensive integration with ServiceNow, primarily around user management as well as service requests operations within uh, ServiceNow wherein we'll show different flows for managing uh, the change requests. With that said, let's get started with today's webinar. The topic is how scheme connectors can help the pain of application integration. Primarily what you will see is the platform and the tool that we demonstrate in enabling and building uh, connectors uh, easily. So what is Skim? Uh, Skim essentially is built as a mechanism for applications to be integrated with IAM solutions. The idea here is they have two specifications, one around data which they call as schema. So you have users, groups, roles, entitlements and your own extensions to those schemas in terms of how they are represented for identities and access data in applications. The second specification is around operations on this data. It describes a mechanism of interacting with the data in those applications through REST APIs. The REST APIs are based on well-defined semantics for create, modify, delete, get operations. Why is Skim so important? Everybody is talking about Skim and why is it important? Skim is important because application integration for people who have been involved with for variety of business process management realize that there are no standard mechanisms for identifying how data needs to be described how do you define the metadata for the data? What is mandatory? How do you represent an entity uniquely in, in an application? Second was around standardizing the provisioning activities. Essentially around creating entities, modifying entities, deleting entities, and getting details about those entities. What it provides is a mechanism to do these operations through two common technologies that have been widely uh, used and accepted for various uh, applications and various uh, systems. One is 
the RESTful APIs wherein you make web service calls to uh, a system that can understand a scheme request and the data interchange is built on JSON and that is how you present data to a scheme environment uh, or a scheme endpoint and the scheme endpoint also returns data uh, in, in the JSON format. Lastly, as you all know, you have scenarios where organizations have multiple IAM solutions addressing different pain points and you need a mechanism for applications to talk to each other and the industry took a stand of building a standard defining a protocol where the IAM systems and their integration is done through a standardized mechanism. Well, we just discussed why scheme is important. Let's spend a few minutes on why Tibura scheme is important. Tibura scheme is unique in the marketplace and it plays an important role in application integration because it serves as a bridge for any IAM solution with any application that is out there. There are no dependencies, there are uh, no requirements in terms of people's knowledge and capabilities for building a connector and these connectors can be deployed independently in a standalone environment and in a collaborative manner and it helps developers build these connectors using a GUI based tool enabling them to deploy connectors to complex applications in a short period of time. Let's look at the Tibora connector framework itself and the two phases that are involved for you to take your application into your IAM environment. First and foremost, the phase around design involves looking at the data that you want to uh, collect, you want to manipulate, describing the application data. What are the resources, what are the fields, what are the unique ways to represent that data, uh, what is the specification around mutability, specification around uh, the, the nature of range of data, what canonical values the data can take. Those specifications are uh, provided as part of input for the designer tool. The second is what is the protocol you use to talk to that application? Uh, is the target application supporting uh, JDBC integration? Does it support uh, HTTP integration? Does it support LDAP integration? We will provide specification in terms of how we want to integrate with that ta target application. The next input to the tool itself is the operations that one w wants to perform as well as specifying what are the commands you need to perform in the target application for those operations. The scheme operations around creating a resource, modifying a resource, deleting a resource, getting details about a resource or searching for a resource is all provided as part of the input. With this input to the designer tool, what you get is a manifestation of your specification that will enable scheme-based connectivity to the target application. The output is the REST-based connector. We also provide, uh, as an added benefit, an ability to make calls to the target application using native Java APIs. So think of it as a Java-based SDK also uh, as a mechanism to uh, talk to the target application. With these two mechanisms of integration, we provide enough documentation about the connector that was configured by the developer. We give you a detailed uh, 
uh, REST API documentation uh, using Swagger and we also provide your typical uh, Java docs kind of documentation for making you know native Java calls. The second phase is around the runtime experience of this exercise which involves the client could be your IAM solution, could be your ITSM solution, it could be GRC, it could be a custom application, doesn't matter what your client is. The client can make different types of calls to the Tubora Scheme server. It could make a REST call, it could make a native uh, Java API call and the Scheme server underneath has the knowledge and the capability to talk to any application out there, whether it's on premise or on the cloud. And it uses the native protocols that the application supports for its integration. So the design phase involves giving specification about your data, how do you connect to that application, what's the protocol you will use to connect to that application, what are the operations, and the runtime would involve making the API calls using REST or native uh, Java into the scheme server which translates that into the uh, native calls. Just getting a little bit deeper into the uh, Java SDK that uh, I've been talking about, the it provides a very powerful API that is completely driven based on the schemas that you define in your uh, connector uh, framework and the APIs that are generated conform to the types given by the APIs, given by the schemas and you can have APIs that conform to the specification around mutability and read only and any canonical values that uh, the uh, resource is allowed to take or the attribute is allowed to take uh, is all uh, provided uh, as as, a, as part of the SDK. So you have a very rich uh, API that gets generated for your connector uh, in the form of uh, Java code. Next, uh, along with the Java APIs, uh, we provide uh, documentation uh, in a couple of flavors that you can uh, use uh, for your development activities. So if, if you take the next step in terms of let's see how you're going to use the tool, uh, what is our thinking in terms of the tool itself, and how does somebody go through this process of uh, connector onboarding. What we do here is uh, you go to the scheme portal, uh, the users of connector development are provided with uh, this uh, portal uh, account. They can log in and they can develop as many connectors as they want and it could be for an on-premise or a cloud application uh, that they are interested in. This could take a few hours depending upon the security model and the number of operations you are planning to configure. In terms of the deployment itself, once you do it, it involves the following steps. There's a one-time activity of you downloading the scheme jar into your environment and then configuring the scheme jar to know about the connectors you have developed and then going to your IAM solution, whatever the IAM solution you have, and for each of the operations that you want to perform in the target application, you want to identify the scheme endpoints, and uh, once you're done with it, you can start sending scheme requests to the connectors you have developed using this tool. So the two phases are managed through the portal uh, first around uh, the design using the GUI tool, next around a couple of options in terms of how you want to deploy it, uh, whether on-premise or on the cloud, is what is involved in, in the deployment phase. So without uh, spending any more time on the slides, I want to uh, switch to the demo uh, side of 
the uh, webinar today. What you will see today is a demonstration of a use case where we have chosen an open source ERP and CRM application called Udu and in that application we will configure some data collection, we will configure some operations and we will look at how the tool generates the appropriate APIs and once you have the connector built we will go into the Tubora IAM uh, solution, we will identify the Udu application or the Udu asset and say we have built a scheme endpoint for this particular application and we'll do the association there. And once we do the association, the next step is demonstration of how does one get an account in Udu application uh, in the use case of a day zero provisioning or a new user coming on board. To demonstrate that, we will create a simple provisioning rule which says users belonging to system depart support department should get an account in Udu. We'll create a simple provisioning rule uh, covering that. And then lastly, what we will do is we will use the same uh, Tibur IAM solution to create a new user and subsequently the new user onboarding will trigger the provisioning rule for the new user and we will show you how an account has been created for this new user in the Voodoo applications. So that's the flow we will see in terms of the application, uh, the operation configuration and uh, uh, the verification in the Voodoo application. Now we will switch to the uh, Tubora scheme connector tool and we will run through the uh, operations in the connector uh, wizard. So if you see uh, the wizard uh, on the screen, what it is showing you is that there are four steps involved in the connector uh, creation process. We will go through each of the four steps and we'll walk through what happens in each of the steps. So uh, let's start with the, you know, the connector setup. The first step in the connector development is the specification around the application, give it a name and for what application we want to build it. And then we want to identify the protocol. The uh, database that is being used is a Proskus database and what you will see now is a representation of all the functionality uh, we will input for this connector. Uh, you will see the connection properties, you will see the SQL for creating a user, SQL for getting data, so that's what is maintained in that file. So typically this is something that uh, you would figure out uh, once you figure out the security model of the application. So in the interest of time, we have put the SQLs and the uh, operations in this uh, particular PDF file. So we are going to run through this. So the next uh, piece around data collection, we have three kinds of data we will collect. One is uh, users, the second is groups, and the third is group memberships. Uh, we will show you uh, how we specify users data and the data that we collect uh, is uh, represented in a CSV form to the caller. Uh, so you will see uh, that's the SQL we'll use to retrieve uh, user data and similarly we'll go through the process of uh, groups and group memberships as well uh, defining the uh, query associated for group data and uh, similarly for, uh, for uh, group memberships. Uh, just to add here, uh, as uh, you know, we go through this process, what we do is if it's a HTTP uh, uh, in a base request, we allow for people to specify uh, the URLs and whether the request is sent in the form of uh, query string or it is presented in the form of uh, request body 
uh, and whatever parameters we want to perform, uh, we want to pass is all taken as input. That's the second step. The third step is defining the uh, resources and operations. So what we are looking at here is the uh, two operations that we'll specify here. First is around creating a, a user uh, in uh, Voodoo and this will involve uh, specifying uh, the resource, the type of operation, this is the scheme operation you want to perform and the user creation in Voodoo involves multiple SQLs. So we are actually going to specify uh, all the SQLs that are needed for creation of the user in Voodoo. Uh, there are, uh, as you can see, three SQLs involved here. We will uh, provide that and then uh, as part of the input, uh, we will provide uh, the values for various uh, parameters. So the SQLs have uh, around four parameters. So what this is doing is that the attribute coming from the scheme schema uh, is what the caller will provide uh, as part of the scheme request and we will map that to a variable in this query. So the display name is the scheme attribute for the user. Uh, we have uh, an account name and then uh, emails is a multi-valued attribute and we want to take an email address and assign it to a, the primary email uh, for this particular user. And lastly, uh, the password that uh, we want to provide uh, the default password for creating this. So this is what the uh, create uh, user operation entails. The next operation we will show is uh, adding a user to a group and this involves again uh, specifying the uh, resource and what is the uh, operation we are going to perform. It's an update on a specific attribute. Groups is a multi-valued attribute on user. We are going to specify that uh, there is a query that needs to be run for a group membership change. So at this point, we have given the specification for the uh, add group membership operation. So you can imagine, uh, you can add as many operations as you want in, the, in that step. Uh, you can uh, specify uh, things like uh, disabling a user, enabling user, uh, changing password, whole bunch of operations can be specified uh, in, in the third step. And the final step is mostly going to be around defining the, uh, verifying whatever specification you have given and making sure that the connector information, the data you are collecting, the queries you have given is uh, all correct. And at this point, the specification uh, or the connector uh, configuration is good to go and we will uh, complete the process of creating this particular connector. What happens uh, when you complete this process is it will give you uh, several artifacts like we uh, saw earlier and the artifacts are available for us to review. One of the things that we will do is download the connector that we just created and we will, uh, once we download it locally into the file system, what we will do is we will go to the IAM application. In this case, what you are seeing is an uh, Tugor IAM application. We will go and pick the Udo application and there is no connector configured for this. And what we will do is we will give the specification of the connector that we just created uh, by uploading the, the manifest that was created. So if you see the manifest there, uh, that's the manifest that was created and 
now we have uploaded the manifest to the uh, client. So what this gives you is an ability where the client can make native Java calls because you have the client Java SDK jars with you and the scheme server is we communicate to the scheme server and we let the scheme server know that uh, here is a new connector that you should uh, be aware of and that specification is provided to the uh, scheme server from uh, once we you know do the you know, configuration uh, as we, uh, as we complete this process let's take a look at the uh, apis that we have uh, generated for this uh, particular connector uh, as we discussed there are a couple of different APIs uh, that get generated one is the uh, restful uh, APIs the other is the uh, native uh, Java APIs that get created uh, we can look at the uh, the Java documentation as well as the Swagger API documentation that is uh, being created. The uh, nice thing about this documentation is it gives you uh, the ability to look at the sample uh, data that you want to give to test it. So you can see there are a couple of operations. One is a create operation uh, which is a post, uh, the patch operation which was the update to the group membership. So you have two operations here and if you expand you'll see a lot more detail around uh, these uh, APIs. It will tell you uh, the information about uh, the success codes, the error codes, uh, how do you look for uh, data and what format data is returned and ultimately it gives you a, an output that you can use to test your uh, APIs. Okay. Similarly, uh, the uh, Java Docs APIs are also uh, provided as well. So let's uh, go to the uh, application and let's do the next step in the demonstration, uh, which is creating a, a provisioning rule. So what you saw so far is we configured a connector, uh, we download, it created a manifest, we downloaded the manifest, we shared the manifest with the IAM solution and the scheme server, we saw the APIs that were generated. The next thing we are going to do is create a provisioning rule and then subsequently create a new user to see how uh, provisioning uh, is managed in the target application. So we will create a simple uh, provisioning rule. All that the provisioning rule is doing here is looking at the uh, process of onboarding users who belong to the support department. So the support department users will get a, a access to the Voodoo account and uh, this will uh, help you achieve that. So the provisioning rule is saying for this user let's go create a Voodoo account and uh, uh, provision that particular user. So we created a provisioning rule uh, through this process and as you can see as part of the provisioning rule itself there are varieties of things you can do uh, you can define notifications once the provisioning uh, completes uh, to the stakeholders uh, and uh, you can have a uh, number of provisioning rules that uh, are applicable for your application. So this is the interface that we use to manage uh, the JML rules uh, within the Tubero IAM platform. One of the rules that you also see is a, a rule for uh, all employees what it means is a new employee that is coming on board uh, is given this default access. The default access typically is getting an account in uh, Active Directory and getting membership 
for example, in uh, all mem all employees uh, security group within Active Directory. So you can have as many uh, provisioning rules as you want, and each of these provisioning rules internally will be uh, using the scheme endpoint for provisioning. And similarly, termination of user, we can use uh, the same platform uh, to define scheme endpoints for uh, handling uh, user termination. The termination could mean disabling accounts in Active Directory or disabling account in Voodoo uh, or removing some uh, role, or removing uh, the person's account in some application. Uh, even in the mover case, we will do uh, a similar exercise where uh, the person's account and uh, access uh, can be managed through this uh, particular uh, uh, tool. So with this uh, provisioning rule created, let's go to the next step which is creating a new user and the new user is also created through the uh, Tibor IM solution and what uh, we will do here is fill out the mandatory fields for creating this particular user and uh, one of the things that we will particularly uh, input in this uh, user is the department. Uh, what we want to do is this user uh, is going to belong to the support department and we want the provisioning rule that we just created which will create an account in uh, Voodoo to be triggered with this new user coming on board. So the moment we add new user, what it triggers to the system is that a new user is, has come on board and at that point we have the uh, system looking for changes that are coming into the uh, environment. While the system is waiting for the new user event to be triggered and detected, Let's go back to the uh, Scheme portal and the, the Scheme designer tool. Uh, I would like to walk a couple of things here in the tool. If you see, there are a couple of uh, tabs at the top or links at the top. First is talking about schemas. What this is, nothing but the schemas that are def defined by scheme and provided out of the box here and as people define and extend their schemas this is the place where they can come and add their scheme schemas and their extensions and once you define your set of schemas you can go into the resources section and have the ability to configure a resource to have one or more schemas that you just defined. So at this point what you're seeing is there are only two uh, resources out there. Potentially you can imagine that uh, if it's a file share application for which you're building a connector you can create a resource called file and define the attributes for that file. You can use some default schemas that are available for uh, file and you can uh, use your own custom attributes and then you can uh, once you have this uh, file resource defined uh, you can uh, configure the operations for this resource uh, while you are doing the connector wizard so the tool gives you an ability to not just build connectors based on the out of the box schemas and resources we provide it also provides an ability to extend the schemas, extend, create new resources, uh, define your own metadata for your uh, schemas and uh, develop connectors for it. And then also it's the same placeholder for you to uh, look at uh, the APIs. One of the things that uh, we plan to do uh, ultimately also is uh, have an ability to uh, test these, uh, provide uh, a mechanism where you can test these APIs, uh, your connectors and also uh, look at uh, FAQ and other uh, aspects uh, that will help you in your uh, development process. Uh, with uh, 
this uh, said, let's go to the Voodoo application and see where we are in terms of the provisioning. Uh, this is the Voodoo application that has been deployed and let's go refresh that and once we refresh that, what you will see is that the user that we created using the IAM solution has now been provisioned uh, within the Voodoo application. So uh, we didn't uh, provide a whole lot of attributes there but you can imagine the more attributes you provide, uh, the more uh, data you provide in your uh, input request, they'll all get uh, populated. So this is uh, one example of how you can look at the connector development and look at operations that you want to perform uh, in, in the target application. So let's talk about the benefits. Uh, as you can see, based on the steps that are involved the and what expertise we need to develop a connector and the fact that we are building something based on standards and taking a standard based approach the overall cost of connected development is you know drastically less here and we see that it is just not tied to any particular solution out there it is not tied to the tubera platform it is not tied to any other im platform so it is client agnostic in terms of who can send skim request to the skim server and it can talk to any of the applications that have been configured uh, through this system. <clears throat> the framework and the GUI tool together reduce the time uh, it takes to uh, build this uh, connector and we notice that the <clears throat> application integration is drastically reduced uh, because of uh, the process uh, that we just uh, went through. We provide a portal uh, which we want to serve as a repository for people to use and uh, uh, treat it as a centralized repository for their connector development. It's a place where we want people to collaborate. It's a place where people can define the projects for which these uh, connectors are going to be developed. Uh, you can maintain versioning of the connectors that you build uh, and any uh, specific uh, uh, modifications that you can make and using that environment for design you can augment and <coughs> extend your implementation team uh, collaboration uh, and subsequently once you have the connectors designed they can be deployed uh, in a uh, simple manner. As you saw the system of configuration and design did not involve any proprietary languages or any proprietary processes or complex steps to build the connector. Uh, that's where we believe that the bar for building a connector has been drastically reduced with this technology that uh, we have demonstrated today. The importance of not just building the scheme based APIs uh, to connect to target systems uh, is uh, uh, evident in the fact that we presented Java based SDK also to talk to target applications. There are complex processes, complex workflows, complex uh, fulfillment mechanisms, complex uh, business processes that organizations have we wanted the ability to provide for a developer wherein they can make those processes, those integrations easy through 
a Java based uh, API as well. <coughs> so the question that perhaps is on everybody's mind at this point is what does it cost? Uh, to be honest with you it is going to be significantly less than any of you ever paid for connector either you licensed it from third party or you used internal resources to build one uh, in either of those cases what you'll find that the cost involved uh, in licensing uh, this particular technology uh, is going to be uh, much less and uh, we will certainly work with you on pricing uh, depending upon your requirement uh, depending upon uh, the uh, capabilities you, you are uh, wanting with this uh, connector tool. Do reach out to us in the uh, numbers and information provided there. Uh, as uh, John mentioned earlier, we'll <coughs> share the recording of the webinar uh, to you. So you can certainly look at the phone number to reach at and uh, the person's email address you know available to you in the recording as well lastly uh, there is some material around the skim connector itself uh, we have in the form of a data sheet we will put more material around how to use these connectors uh, videos around them uh, we'll provide even downloads for some of the most common applications uh, that you can use uh, for a trial evaluation and any more information that you need feel free to reach us at the email address uh, provided there and last but not least we are giving a 45 day software trial for you uh, for all the attendees uh, you can reach us and uh, we will provide you access to the connector tool and the skim server uh, your uh, input feedback uh, will be greatly appreciated and any enhancements improvements uh, recommendations that you make uh, will be certainly considered and we will work with you in uh, helping you in uh, building your connectors uh, for any new IM programs or uh, if you are looking at using this technology for your existing deployments irrespective of what IAM solution has been deployed uh, we are happy to work with you. Uh, with that said uh, John over to you for Q&A. &A. Yeah um, great we do have a few questions the first one uh, falls on that last point which is um, how soon is it available and how soon can they um, get uh, get uh, their hands on. Uh, we will make it available to you as early as in the next couple of days. Please reach us out to the with that email address, uh, and if it makes sense to have a phone conversation, happy to have that as well to get you started. Very good. Uh, just got a note that the data sheet link uh, didn't work, so we'll get that fixed for you right away. Apologize for that. <clears throat> And uh, we can certainly send it to you privately uh, as well, but uh, we'll we'll fix that link uh, ASAP. Make sure that it's available. Um, let's see. Another question that came in was: We're using Sailpoint and have a requirement to develop several dozen connectors. Uh, technology looks like it'd be very useful to standardize our development, um, but you know what happens in the future if we wish to move away from that solution? are we required to make modifications to the connectors? And the reason for the question uh, is just generally to understand migration costs. A very good question. There is no migration cost here. Uh, this is what we call as you build scheme connector once using this platform and you can migrate to any solution of your choice and it is going to be seamless. Once you are define your scheme endpoints and you are applications are scheme aware you can go from one IAM solution to another solution uh, seamlessly. 
Okay. Um, there's a, there's a quick question. Uh, is is Tabora IM and IGA solution a cloud uh, system? Yes. Uh, the answer to that is uh, we support both cloud and on-premise depending upon customer's requirement. Uh, so yes, to answer the question, yes, we are a cloud solution. Okay. And um, do you, is there functional documentation for this? The, I'm assuming by functional uh, in terms of how it gets deployed and how uh, it works in a production environment. Uh, and if that's the question, yes, uh, we uh, will provide the documentation around how do you scale out uh, if you have hundreds of applications to integrate, uh, how do I configure my scheme servers, how do I route my scheme endpoints, uh, how do I load balance these, uh, these uh, application uh, change requests. Uh, we will provide uh, documentation around uh, deployment, hosting, uh, staging, and uh, scaling up to large uh, requirements as well. Yeah, one of the one of the follow-ons on that was uh, how can uh, you test the connector that's been developed? A good question. Uh, people can use the REST clients that are available on uh, various browsers and. Uh, the other option is they could use API management software like Postman, for example. Uh, additionally, uh, we are looking into providing a test, a test environment uh, as part of uh, this framework itself uh, to simplify the testing process. Um, we have one that says, how can we integrate with Avexka? In what way is it different from AFX? Uh, long story short, uh, you can integrate uh, with AVEX uh, uh, using uh, the AVEX database on, on the back end. Uh, we can uh, integrate with any of the latest uh, APIs that are provided uh, from with the AVEX platform. The AFX question is a longer question uh, to answer. Uh, happy to take it up uh, in a follow-up call. Okay. Uh, for that, gentlemen, just uh, email us uh, directly. You can email me. I'll, I'll make sure it gets to Sanjay um, or some of the staff. Um, let's see. Um, the other question was around can, what's a... What other capabilities does, you know, they're, they're not familiar with us. Uh, what is the capabilities overall with um, uh, Tabora relative to provisioning and governance, I guess, uh, capabilities differentiators? Right. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we do provide a lot of other functionality uh, around uh, user provisioning, deprovisioning, access governance. Uh, to give you uh, a brief uh, intro about Tibura, uh, we have a platform that is based on microservices uh, architecture uh, wherein uh, we use uh, machine learning across different stages of IAM lifecycle, be it provisioning, uh, be it certification, be it uh, access control, violation and remediation. We use uh, historical information. We see current patterns of access. We analyze that and we help uh, manage your provisioning policies automatically. So as the business changes and as access requests come in, we allow people to uh, see that their provisioning policies are automatically managed without administrator involvement. Uh, so there is machine learning uh, coming into play across uh, various uh, IAM uh, processes and we address uh, other capabilities around single sign-on and uh, password management as well. Uh, lastly, we also have a tool that provides a quick assessment uh, like was telling you earlier 
uh, of an IAM environment uh, and that is uh, IAM solution uh, agnostic as well. So somewhat of a follow on to this um, and, and uh, relevant, uh, it says, would you recommend Tabora only as a, oops, the question disappeared now. Um, <laughs> Somebody's uh, answering it, uh, I guess. But uh, yeah, it was something to the effect of: Would you recommend uh, Tabora only as a solution for using connectors or or other, you know, functionality around identity access management and governance? So, kind of a loaded question there, but <laughs> yeah. So we think of both the assessment tool and connector framework as part of our larger platform. Uh, we uh, provide these capabilities uh, more as uh, a convenience and uh, part of the innovation that we've done with the platform itself. Uh, we are, are not seeing ourselves as a, uh, a connector uh, shop uh, and focusing on the connector piece itself. We are looking at the IAM uh, platform and the addressing the IAM pain points and uh, in cases where uh, some of the uh, platform and pain points are addressed and if people's pain point is on the connector side uh, the architecture is built such a way that they can use our uh, connector technology and they don't need to forklift and replace what they have in cases where they're not happy with what they have uh, we can come in and uh, replace their uh, uh, IAM, SSO, and password management uh, as required. Right. Cool. And and to clarify, I think I know the answer to this, but it says, does it mean the app skim connector uh, developed that you know once it's developed uh, using this tool can be developed on any IAM tool for provisioning? And just to clarify, it can be used on any provisioning tool uh, as an endpoint. So what it means is uh, you can go into any of your IAM applications and uh, point to this connector uh, and uh, the, uh, the skim server that we have and that will provision in the target application. Right. And I think you answered this one. Uh, Tabora, uh, ha, does Tabora have a solution for single sign-on? And, and I'll answer that. Yes, we do. And, uh, and we have a thick client uh, SSO capability as well. Okay. Cool. I think that's it. So unless there's other questions or if I've missed a question, I would encourage you to email us at... Um, Info at tabora.com, and we'll uh, we'll uh, do our best to answer your question directly. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar, and uh, thanks, uh, Sanjay. Um, I'll wish you all a great day, and we've ended a few minutes early. So take care, and uh, for those in different time zones, have a great evening. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.